Good afternoon. Welcome to County Connection. I'm your host, Supervisor Daryl Seymour, and today our guest is Cami Darris, uh, County Assessor. Welcome. Thank you. How are you doing, Cami? I'm doing well. Great. You know, we're going to talk a little bit about taxes. It's getting close to that season, and but it's not necessarily income taxes. We're going to talk about people's property taxes for a few minutes, and a lot of people who see different things that are happening, laws change, everything changes, and you know, we all may have already received that notice that kind of shows what our valuations and changes might be coming up. But why don't you kind of break down a little bit about the process of, of what our, that tax all includes and whether it's not just goes to the county, but what, what uh, the portions and separations of a county tax on people's property tax. Okay, as, as the assessor, we really don't do the taxes. We literally okay. work with the valuation. But when you do get those notices of value, I mean, a lot of people look at it and say, oh, my value went up 20, 30%. But you've got to look at that limited value. The limited value is set to go up only 5% unless you build or change your property. So make sure you look at the limited value before you, you know, think your taxes will go up a bunch. But when you do get that tax bill, if you look at the actual tax bill in the middle portion, it's going to show how much went to the school, how much went to a fire district, how much went to a library district, uh, Northland Pioneer College gets some of that money. The county gets roughly 10% for its general fund and maybe three or four more percent for the library district and the flood control. So we have that money coming in our front door, but 90% of it, 85% of it is going out that back door to these other jurisdictions. And everybody thinks we have all this money sitting here, but we just collect it for everybody. Right. Can you imagine if every single jurisdiction had their own finance team their own it that tax bill would be way more than it is now definitely would and so that's what we i hear a lot as a supervisor hey my taxes are going up my property taxes are up what are you guys doing we are one group but there's like you said there's a fire board that they're over there control and whatever they want to spend that relates to people's taxes the school board that relates to people's taxes you've got your college that relates and then these special things so by the end of the day, you set the valuations or look at the valuations and, and some people have opportunities to question those valuations and to change if there is a process that they go through as well. And how long have you been doing the assess valuation for the county? I, I've been, I started with Navajo County back in 79 as a, as a file clerk actually is what I started as. I worked, went to school half a day and then came in and filed all the papers for them in the afternoon. I've been there a while. And, that, and you've been the elected assessors for? About 20 years. About 20 years there. Yeah. You've done a fantastic job. You had some new things a, a little bit, some technology. You know, this year we changed a little bit here. I, I know as a, the county, they give you a little better tools to work with. Uh, I, I guess it's satellite imaging and right. things. Uh, share a little bit of how that's going to help uh, with things going forward too. Well, we literally have, I mean, we have a pretty large size county. And we have six people that actually go out and measure and do the appraising. And so we are supposed to look at 25% of all the properties a year. This will help us look and see which ones we have to go look at without driving, you know, 45 minutes out to the middle of nowhere to come out there and find out there's nothing really there. So what we've done is we have this new imagery that a plane will fly over and it'll take shots from every single side of the, the buildings. I mean, we won't be able to see in the windows or do anything like that. We can just see, is that a garage, is that a porch, or is that living area? And what that does is that triggers an appraiser to go out there and look at that, that area. We don't, from those imagery, say, you know, that's living area and we're going to add right. it to your tax, your tax valuation. We send an appraiser out there. The appraiser, you know, goes out and talks to the people and says, you know, I'm here just to check and make sure everything's right and make sure everybody pays their fair share. Right. You know, and there's also a process if somebody's you know has a piece of property and say they want to change it from you know i know i know today we even had an opportunity of changing somebody's property from commercial back to agricultural or those those processes and and you help with that and you you help people you know make the changes that are necessary that sometimes that comes before the board of supervisors to either approve or disapprove and i know you've been very active on on taking those requests and working with those requests and not always are they to the advantage of somebody. I know we've had some businesses that really thought there's 
valuation should be changed, but we upheld your, your assessed valuation as well. And so I really appreciate what you do because in the long run, it's helping everybody be fair with how their, their properties are assessed and things do. And what most people don't realize is as county assessor, I don't have all this power to do whatever I want. The Department of Revenue actually does a report card. And so I have to have values in a certain percentage mm -hmm. or the Department of Revenue will come in and put them in that percentage. So it's not like I can go in and choose, you know, Sam gets to go 50% of what it's, Fred gets to go 75%. We go across the board and try to make everybody fair. And then DOR looks at our files and says, yes, they're good or no, you need to do some more work. Okay. You know, we know uh, with time, sometimes things are more challenging. Uh, people have changes in their lives and sometimes uh, maybe you lose a spouse so one way or another and that can change uh, some of the tax equations. That's kind of what we want to maybe focus on here for the rest of the show today is, is some of the changes that happen and how do people become eligible maybe to lower a tax uh, valuation or, or maybe the amount that they pay of their taxes through some of the programs that we have. Uh, share with us just uh, what is a property tax exemption and tell us a little bit more about who may qualify for that. Okay, th these are all state of Arizona programs. They're nothing okay. just Navajo County, but they do have a widow widowers. I always get those twi widow widowers, it's hard to say. Uh -huh. they ha we also have a 100% disabled. In the past, we had a veterans exemption. We don't have one now, but there is stuff going to the legislature right. to, to request that at this point. So as a widow widower, you have, they're, they're for low income is what they are. So your household can't have a income of more than $34,901 of taxable income. So if it's social security and you're not paying taxes on it, that doesn't count. If you have a child or a disabled person living with you, then that goes up to $41,870. Okay. And so with that, does that wipe the tax away or is it just uh, reduce it based on, on a per certain percentage? It, it's just a reduction in the taxes. Okay. They give you a certain amount of your assessed value is what you can get on off on your taxes. So based on the value of your house, you can get more, you can get less. It comes off of your um, valuation. So roughly based on tax rates, it's usually between 350 and $400 okay. is what it usually is. Some savings that way. How do they how do they qualify for this? Or I know no dollar wise, but what would they have to do? Is there a form they need to fill out? Is there something they need to do to come into your office? Uh, what what are the steps going forward? And well, we're government, go? so we have a form for everything. <laughs> <Okay. You> know, <laughs> we have a form for everything. So there is a form that you fill out, and you can come into the Holbrook office. We have an office here in Sholo that's open on Tuesdays that you can go into. On the second Tuesday of every month, we have an office in Heber at the county place there. Or with, with COVID-19, any new signers used to have to come and do it in person. But what we're doing is we're taking their information over the phone, sending them the paper, letting them sign it, and then send it back to us. If it's not your first time signing, we actually just send you the form. You sign it and send it back to us is all they have okay. to do with that. Now, uh, in case there's certain things they'll need, like what a death certificate and things, if they're had to prove that they are a widow or widower uh, from that year. Yeah, they would have to um, give a death certificate. We ask a few questions. You know, your spouse would have had to been a resident of Arizona when they passed away, but if your spouse was, you know, on vacation or something out of state and passed away, we we can work with that. Okay, on there. For the disability exemption, uh, what qualifies a person? I mean, is there a tax exemption that comes from the state or, or what do they have to have uh, to certify that they are disabled? It's the same income limits as the widow widowers, okay. but they have to, what we do is we have a form from the Department of Revenue. They take this form to the doctor and the doctor determines whether they're 100%. Our office is not determined whether you're disabled or not. They take it to the doctor. If the doctor says you're 100% disabled, then you're 100% disabled. Okay. And then you mentioned to you about the vet. I know that's one of the new legislatures that are being proposed right now because we did have that for, for veterans. And I know it's uh, gained some traction. We had quite a few people come and, and talk. And I know there's some different legislative people that are introducing that again this year to try to get that exemption for, for veterans. And, and it, it would be forward. nice if that goes through to honor our veterans and give them give them something back, even, even a little bit with Every little bit would help to show them how we appreciate them. Okay. 
Are there filing dates or times that this has to be done by? They do. We use the filing dates are January to the last working day in February. Okay. But with that said, um, we also have another form. But if we have a waiver that if you didn't make that timeline, we will let you continue to sign up here in Navajo County until the tax rate is um, established. So you can still sign up till the end, the first of August. All we have to do is have you sign an initial form. It goes before the Board of Supervisors and they say, yes, it's, it's okay for them to get the exemption. Okay. On that. You know, it's interesting you said the tax rate, you know, that you do the assessed valuation. We work on the budget. And then when it all comes down, we look at, okay, this is how much money we need to have. Do we need to raise taxes or lower taxes? And I think uh, we've been able to hold our tax rate steady for, I think, the last three or four years. How, do you recall the last time we took a tax rate increase? I don't, but Navajo County also, for you that don't know, they cannot just come in and say, I need another million dollars of, mm -hmm. of tax dollars. They have a formula. They can only raise their tax levy. So they, if they got $5 million last year, they can only get that $5 million plus two and a half more percent. They, they yeah. cannot just go in and say, you know, we need five more million dollars and do that. Navajo County has, as do most districts, have um, limits on what they can do. Limitations there. And it's hard because there's sometimes you have needs or you have things there of being able to make the ba uh, budget balance. But I know the last few years we've been able to hold constant on that tax rate and not change it. Uh, at the same time, people's assessed valuation or something may have changed a little, so you may see a little bit of tax increase, but it wasn't that we had a tax rate or anything, or it could have been something outside the county's hands when the school district or the, the fire department could have had some changes that affect that as well. Yeah, so. at one, one time, somebody had a very good analogy of the Arizona tax tip, and it's like when those little games where you move the nut around and find to find the shell inside of it, the little nut inside the shell. Uh, it's a bunch of moving parts, and it's very confusing, so it's hard to explain to people. But if you give us a call, if you have any questions about your tax bill, even your tax bill or your valuation, give us a call, and we'll try to walk you through it. Yeah. Normally, they have like 60 days of that valuation to appeal right. or, or to ask questions that and things were mailed out, when did that time frame start clicking here? Okay, we mailed the notices of value on the 28th of January. Okay. So you have until March 29th, I believe, to file an appeal. But when you do file that appeal, you can't just say, you know, my taxes are too high. Right now, home values are, are going up all over the nation, right. even in Navajo County. I mean, even in the northern part of the county where we don't really have a lot of increases. Things are going, are selling. But once again, look at that limited value, right? Because it's only going to go up a small percentage based compared to the full cash, and that's what your value is going to be based on. Okay. But when you do appeal, you have to give us a reason. You have to say, you know, the house down the street sold for X, and you've got mine valued at Y. But you can't just say my taxes are too high. Right. We have to look at the market. That's a good point, and I think you know our market is like you said it's it's off the chart right now arizona is one of the fastest growing uh cities the inventory up here is is very difficult to have very much inventory so when a house hits the market it usually has two or three offers on it and that seems to drive the price up as well and so consequently things are becoming higher valued and you know lumber prices everything is is the supply and demand issue right now is raise that price up as some too. Yeah, and it's not just the the price of the homes, the amount of home selling, the recordings that we are getting, they have doubled in the last year and a half. So it's not just that the homes are selling for more, they're selling more often also. Do you want to kind of talk a little bit about the breakdown of what actual cash is and what fair market cash value and limited LPV is, those things? So what the full cash value is, is what we set as the market value. That's what we believe you could sell your home for. 99% of the time, you could sell your home for more than that. But that's, that's what we use for tax purposes as we consider the market value. The limited or primary value was back in 2015. The voters actually voted to put this in place where everybody your taxes will be based on that primary or limited value. And it can only increase 5% a year unless you build or change your property in some way. So the eyes of who's looking changes your home a lot. So I remember uh, 
there's a little picture of the little boy that goes out and builds a little thing and it says the bank looks at it as this, yeah. the, the investor looks at it as this, the homeowner looks at it as this, the tax assessor looks at it as such. And it's the same house, but, but, but yet in it. the eyes of them, it changes from a very small birdhouse to a very large right. you know, mansion and, and is where it comes yeah. from. And that was always humored me as a kid growing up of the different eyes that look at a house and give it a value. We, ha we actually had that on our bulletin board at one time. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's great. Well, is there anything else uh, about appealing or something that they need to be aware made aware of or the tax valuations that are coming up? Or, you know, I know you have a fantastic group who works with you. Share just a little bit about your department and, and how many people you have working for you. And, and then tell us a, a ballpark of how many properties that you have to assess every year. Okay, we roughly have about 20 people in our office, including myself. Yeah. We, have, we have a great bunch. I mean, we have our ups and downs, you know, just like any other family or department has it. But for the most part, I am very grateful for my staff. I mean, I couldn't do what I do without them. So I, I really appreciate them. There. You do a great job with them, Cammie, and you, you always have, and you always have their backs, and they work hard you know, for you. I mean, yeah. they work hard for the citizens of our county. In a year's time, though, valuations of, of properties, how many parcels or pieces of property do we have? We have know? a little over 90,000. 90,000. So you're sitting there trying to go through those and you have to do that on an annual every year or annual ha basis. they have to have some type of hands-on touch about that. Yeah. So, so what, what we do is we do the same thing that you would do as a fee appraiser. A fee appraiser goes out, he looks at your home, and he goes out and gets three, comp, three comps to say, based on these comparables, your home is worth this much. Well, we can't visit every single home and get three comps for every home. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we, every time a home sells, we get an affidavit saying what this home sold for and the conditions of the sale. We take those affidavits and divide the county into market areas and submarket areas. And then based on those submarket areas, these sales say homes are selling for, I'm just gonna use a rough number, $100 a square foot. So then we apply $100 to all like homes to come up with, with a valuation. I see. And so it's kind of a square footage and things there, the valuation. Great. Well, thank you for what you do. We appreciate your staff as well of what you do. I know you're a champion down there in the county and, and making things happen and keeping things going. And I just want to thank you for your time today. And citizens, we want you to know there is a process. If there's something, especially if you fall within those categories of being a widow or a widower, and your, your income level is such outside of uh, Social Security, you can make up the, what's that number again, 32? It's uh, 34,900 if you don't have any children or a disabled person living at the property, and 41,870 of taxable income. And just as a note, um, three people from the office will be at the Sholo Senior Citizen Center tomorrow if anybody has any questions okay. for them and have an opportunity to call and call and check it out. But we appreciate it. It's not gonna wipe that tax out, but it will give you a deduction. And that's what we wanna help any way that we can so that you can stretch those dollars a little further as we go forward. And you know what, they won't be there tomorrow because this is probably being taped a little early. They probably so they will, won't, they, they'll, so they'll work through that. They'll, they'll make it happen, but give, but us, give a us a call. call. You know, call, call us down. What is a good number for uh, them nine, to call? 928-524-4086. 4086, so thank you, Cammie. Appreciate mm -hmm. you being thank with you. us today. Thanks for watching uh, us today on County Connection. I look forward to seeing you again. And as always, have a great day. Thank you.